everybody. Welcome to Sun Racing Day 5 review of Royal Ascot. I'm Tom Bull. I'm delighted to be joined by star stunning tipster Callum Jameson, who landed possibly the biggest prize winner I've seen in my entire life at Royal Ascot this afternoon. Uh, the wonderful Nando Parada in the Group 2 Coventry Stakes. Callum, we've got to start with that. Talk us through it. Um... I mean, I was off today, I'm not going to lie, so I wasn't paying much attention this morning to any of the racing, but I was looking through the racing yesterday to have a couple of bets to tune in today, and I actually did the preview for the race card a couple of days back, and I put it up then, and it was about 33-1 to 1 with Roger Vera in Star Clark, I thought it was too big, it might run into a place. Um, and a couple of my mates texted me this morning saying, oh, it's 100-1, to 1, no, you still can't fancy this, and I was like, why not? It's, it's even bigger than it was at the start. Come on, you've got to put a few quid on now. And then my dad came around this morning to help me out in the garden, fix the fence. And he said, oh, what are you back in today? And I said, oh, not much, but I like Pinatubo in the St. James's, but he's short enough now. Um, Cardem in the Diamond Jubilee. And I said, there's one that's under, about 100 to 1, I believe, in the Coventry States, Nando Prada. I went, oh, that sounds good. And then he went on his phone and 150 to 1 calorie, we went, even better, even better, and so I probably should mention them, they're not, we're not partners with them, but Skybet, they're paying five places, so I thought, why not, it's only got to be nine home, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's a bit of luck, obviously, and you, but when you sort of fancy one at a big price, you just got to take a flower and go with it, haven't you, there's no good having a quid on and I mean, he, no, he won well as well. He got to the <laughs> curb, but Cobb Kirby obviously thought he was a decent horse, didn't he? He rode him positively and sort of a furlong out. I thought he might get caught, but then all of a sudden they all stopped him behind. I think the, and the, the second horse probably could have got past him, just didn't look like he wanted to go past him, and he, he stuck it out well. And Kirby's the man you want to boot him home, isn't he? He is indeed. I'll say it was an Amazing pick, considering he was he was fifth on debut. In mean, fair play for picking that one out, very uh, impressive. I mean, yeah, I stuck it on Twitter as well because I didn't just want it to be like oh, he's hundred to one, have a quid, and if it doesn't come in, people just go move on. But fair enough. Sure. But I put it in the tracker after its debut. It's, it's that new market card, you know, where everything was win winning on that rail. It's making all uh, towards the stand side, and he was drawn the complete other side, green as grass. He was right in contention till the dip. And the dip, his legs just went everywhere. And Kirby eased off him, nice easy time. And fifth, it was still a decent race. So the varying horse that finished, I think, fourth in the end was, I think, fourth or third in that as well. I think that's what's obviously going to be a good race now. And caught the, I was expecting him, I don't know, to come out of Windsor or something, maybe and win a maiden. And then you see him declare for that. <laughs> yeah. Not much well, they, knew, they, they, they obviously knew he was pretty good, didn't they? But, mm. I mean, that was it was definitely an authoritative performance, too, as you say. Mm. Um, but, yeah, massive congratulations. And I think you're probably in the champagne flowing for a few days. It's in the, the freezer, as we speak, because <laughs> there was none chilled at, at the same room, so. Oh, superb. Absolutely superb. Um, a couple of other races to talk about on the on today. Just to, let's have a What's quick that? chat about the group. <laughs> yeah, I know. You might not think so. Um, the Alpine star, very yeah. impressive in the coronation stakes. Related, yeah. of course, to Alpha Centauri. Um, do you think she's got a pretty big future over a mile? I mean, yeah. She, I mean, my doubt with her, I, I, sort of, I didn't really have a strong fancy in that race, but I thought if she kicks on from two to three, I did doubt the form of that. I can't remember. It was a group three she won at the end of the season in Ireland. I doubt the form of that a little bit. But Jessica Harrington, just does, if she doesn't muck around, does she? When she's got a good one, she places them carefully. And she, she thrived, didn't she? The ground, I think, was probably in her favour, drying up a little bit, I think, probably came to their rescue a bit, but the world's at her feet now, and she, she won that quite well. And I think a couple probably underformed, the quadrilateral just didn't quite see out her race again, did she? I'm not sure what yeah. they I think she looked like she needed further at Newmarket, and then today, I don't know, it's maybe the opposite, but... The yeah, opposite might, today, that's what I thought. Yeah. Might need a break and a wind up or something, I don't know. There's obviously something not quite right with her, because that Philly's mile performance was a lot better than what she's shown us. I don't think you can't knock her for a guinea's run, but again, I think today was probably a backward step from that, I'd say. I think, I think sharing was a, a real eye catcher in that. I mean, not that we're going to be back in her game, but I in fair play for them to coming over and giving her a good run. She, she ran well, I thought. 
Yes, yeah, she ran really well. I think she would have got pretty close if it had been fast ground. Um, mm. Unfortunately, it wasn't, of mm. course. Uh, but yeah, really impressive Alpine start. And Palace Pier over a mile as well. What, what oh, did you make of him? You... That was a cracking race, wasn't it? Race of the week, I think, on paper beforehand. And it, it delivered, didn't it? Um, I mean, they're, they're all the big three actually all ran, maybe not ran their race as such, but they all, they were there swinging, weren't they? Come the final third on Wichita along the rail. Pinatubo was travelling like a dream, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He I was. mean, he, he, do you think he's probably, what, seven furlong holes, maybe six furlongs would see him? I think like. so, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think he, for me, he's a bit, he looks a bit like a bit like a t- two darn hot type. Maybe mm. a, a really kind of, a, a Goodwood mile he might just about get. Mm. But anything else, I think possibly short of the distance he needs. Yeah, mm. a, a sort of July Cup, maybe sprint cup in better ground if they get that maybe something like that but it's a shame um, isn't it? it would be good to see them sort of all lining up again but they're probably mm. going to go their separate ways now i think aren't they? i mean what what did they say i didn't watch any of the aftermath did they say what which which eater what they thinking with him to... well i think which which eater might well go for the sussex along with um pina okay. Tubo and palace pier likely to go for the moulin in france wow okay. um yeah she's I mean, as you say, it's a bit of a shame they won't all be against each other, mm. but then Siskin's like he's running the Sussex Stakes too, so mm. that could be a, mm. a proper good well, race. Well, obviously the older horses too. I mean, you've got of course. the Muhalta from the Queen Anne, I think they said might go there, didn't they? And there was the, the varying horse on the handicap the other day. That's probably the end of the shout races. Like yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Lucy, um, Siskin obviously coming over. Circus Maximus probably might go. Yeah, he'll go there. Aiden yeah. will probably run both of them, I imagine, because it's such a shortened season now, and York and Goodwood are going to be... Sort of the last, obviously, champions there side, the last big group ones, aren't they, in Britain anyway? So they, they've got to run them. They don't have any choices. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was a cracking race, wasn't it? It's fair play, Palace Pier on it. Well, he's come out of a handicap to take on those and he stuck that out really well, didn't it? There was a lot of talk. It was very Kingman after. I thought it was more... He, he dug it out rather than sort of a flashy turn of foot finish, didn't he? Because Pinatubo was travelling all over them. He was. Part. He's got so right, much pace. Kept Pinatubo. going, kept going. Furlong out, I thought Pinatubo not be back, but good to see him win again, wasn't it? But I think Palace Pier possibly the kind of horse you could, you could go for the job on maybe later in the season. Never Def, a month, oh, definitely, definitely. I think yeah. ten furlongs would be his thing, wouldn't it? A well-run ten furlongs where he can travel in behind and sort of push on a couple of furlongs out. I think the Eclipse might have been his next race, but obviously it's his four-year-old's only, isn't it? But yeah, absolutely. No, very exciting for all those all those top three. I thought Wichita um, ran a good race, but I, I thought Ryan Ryan possibly could have pushed on a bit sooner because the others did come to him, and then he started to roll away. Well, I mean, like, like when Pinatubo and Palace Beer came to him, I thought that's it; he'd fade away. But he was only beaten a length from yeah. less less than that from stuck on really well. Yeah, the, the, he, I, I was a bit hesitant to go too strongly on him after his guineas run. I thought he's maybe slightly flatter because where they're all those four or five that are up top, I thought he might have just been well positioned efficiently compared to the rest of them. But he, he's proven that that wasn't a fluke. And thankfully for now, the guineas looks like it might be a decent race as well, which it yeah. always proven to be. Yeah, very much so. Uh, let's just discuss the final group one of the afternoon, which is the Diamond Jubilee. Another really good finish, actually. That saw Hello Yumzane win, just seeing off Dream of Dreams, who came with another late rattle like he did in the mm. race last year. And then, of course, Skeptical, he looked like he was going to come win the race before fading yeah. late on. Um, your thoughts on that? I was, again, Skeptical, just at the price and things, but obviously from, I didn't know, I, I backed card at me, actually, but from a sort of, Storylines, it would have been good to see Skeptical win, wouldn't it? They'll see the bargain buy. Yeah, of course. Small, small trainer over in Ireland. And I think, had it been probably an easier six, he probably would have got up, wouldn't he? But just those dying strides, he just, just got nabbed, didn't he? I think maybe slightly quicker ground or a flat six, and that would have been his, wouldn't it? But he, he, I, was, I was against him just because I thought he's won what handicaps and the listed race. I couldn't back him at nine to four, two to one. And he's proven a lot of people wrong there, I think. And credit to him there, that was a brilliant run. Hello, Hume's saying it was slightly tacky dead ground, probably saved him in the end, didn't it? And yeah, fair, I would agree. Fair yeah. play to Kevin Ryan. He hasn't had the best of starts this season in a sense, but I mean, he obviously had the big race double at the end of the card. Then he probably swapped that all day for a couple of seconds and thirds throughout the week. And he's got a nice horse there. He's a bit inconsistent, isn't he? But when he's on his day, he's, he's as good as it gets over that six. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree with that. Um, I thought Dream of Dreams was another cracker. For mm. some reason, he just seems to stay on that little bit too late. Maybe he hasn't mm. got, quite got the pace for it. More Or a seven over Ascot, I think, would suit him better. Yeah. Um, 
Right, lovely. Uh, rest of the week then, Callum, just to sum up quickly, what would you say was your highlight of the meeting? <laughs> Um, the Coventry Stakes, I think. Um, <laughs> okay, apart from that. <laughs> um, the highlight of the week, you caught me here. Uh, I mean, Stradivarius was brilliant, wasn't he? I mean, I think uh, Charlie Johnston summed it up best after the race, didn't they, when they spoke to him about Naya Road, and he said, for a lot of the races, it's been the groom and perhaps a trainer shouting the, the horse home if it's, if it's winning, seeing the empty grandstands, but... They said Stradivarius to a man and to a lady. Everyone there was just on their feet clapping. And yeah, I can it, imagine. It's, 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 it started with a bit of a damn squib, I think, the week. It just didn't feel quite right. It's no one's fault. It's just the scenario it's in. But I think just that day, the rain around and everything, somehow Stradivarius just brought it to life. But I think the last couple of days have felt more enjoyable just because of the back of that buzz, I think. It's, Definitely it's agree. It's slightly strange, but I think it has... I think it just. I think a few more outsiders probably joined in too, and just thought, "Wow!" It just seemed the last couple of days have been a lot better than the, the first couple of days. And I mean, the slightly weighted program towards the end of the week. I mean, today's card was brilliant, wasn't it? I think it probably helped no, too. Yeah. But it, I think Stradivarius is the clear highlight for me. Off the top of my head, there's probably a few others, but that was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely agree. Stradivarius is wonderful. The other one for me was Lord North. Who I thought was really very impressive in, in the Prince of Wales yeah. and it's definitely got a big 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 future of one mile two and what a race that yeah. eclipse could be him against the naval if they yeah. both turn well, up there I, that think was... I was on the zoom call actually after with John Costin a couple of people thought um you know, he won't go to the eclipse because you've obviously got an able going there and John straight away said no different owners wouldn't have a problem going for them and that to be fair to him a lot of people would probably shirt that or try and persuade yeah, one owner yeah, yeah. to take a slightly different route. It probably helps at the, the truncated season. They don't have as many yeah. options, do not they? But I think the, I think that if he's going to run again here, unless they work, because I think the Breeders' Cup might be the big the big race for him come the end of the season. So And he has had two runs within a week, hasn't he, already? And that is what, true. The, the Eclipse is early July, so it might be... It's three, another couple of weeks, isn't it, yeah? It's, it's, what, it's the Sunday after the, the derby, isn't it? So... They might just skip that, I think, but who knows? He's, he's come from handicaps to that brilliant, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, just to see a bit of a throw, a bit of a, a, a loose one here. Who's your idea of the Derby winner after this week? Um, I mean, what the, the lever? You had to nail me down. I think at this very moment, I'd go with the solid pick, which I think is military march. Because okay. I think he will certainly see out that trip. Um, and he's got a bit more experience. Re- English King, I really like the horse. I just think it's going to be a hell of a lot different to it. He hasn't come off the bridle yet, which is obviously <laughs> yeah, not true. a bad thing, if you think about it. But a, 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 that camber at Epsom, the furlong out, if Tom McQuan, who I assume is going to ride him. I'm yeah, he other, is apparently, I, I yeah. haven't seen otherwise. That it's completely different trying to... But say Mogul's coming on his outside, so he just cruised past the ball and uh, Bob Scirocco, didn't he? At Linfield, it's a completely different kettle of fish that to all out for the first time in your career. But then again, he might just be good enough to, to get past that anyway. But at the prices at the moment, I'd be going with the charge then, just because he's proven that form got a bit of a boost in that. With who was the horse that won the Jersey States? Malatham was behind him in the autumn yes, stakes yeah. at Newmarket, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Looks, yeah, looks looks a very, very, very competitive yourself. race this year. Um, I'm a huge fan of English King mm. visually. Um, I'm not sure whether Camaco is going to stay. Um, the one that I really like, but I don't know whether he's going to go for the Irish Derby or English Derby, is Vatican City. But um, yeah, as I say, we don't know where he's going to go. But I was super impressed with this Guineas run because I think he's going to be a lot better over further. And the way he stayed on there suggests he's going to be one of Aiden's top middle distance three-year-old colts, of which there aren't many this year. Let's be honest. Yeah, I think, I think behind the scenes, though, they're, I think they're trying to work it out themselves, aren't they? I don't think they've actually learned much at Ascot. I think they've got, obviously got the ledger horse now, but they're, I think the Derby's still up because the, the Irish Derby's next weekend, isn't it? So they're going to have to work <laughs> yeah, it out before soon. then. So. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be interesting to see what they do with the Russian Emperor because, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't massively taken. I know he won. But I'm not sure how strong a race it was, and mm. he he doesn't look the speediest, which you do need a bit of speed for. The you dog. just never know with Aiden, do you? He just, to be fair, he just runs them and finds out on the course, and he like obviously Mogul was the horse coming into this week. Everyone thought mm. 
he'll win and he'll be favourite for the derby and he's got his flip flop the complete other way now. So yeah, yeah. like Japan obviously not performing, but then he has his winners that no one's got their arm before. I think he's just he's got so many good horses people forget about his sort of second, third strings, don't they? Yeah, you're not wrong. They often prove to be the, the ones to side with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a cracking couple of weeks in prospect ahead of us. And I think all that's left to say is go enjoy that champagne off that yeah. wonderful, yeah. wonderful yeah. course of the commentary. Now, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Callum. Nice one, mate. Speak to you soon. And you. Love it.